Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and the 680 is finally registered. Yeah! Okay, so the 680 is finally registered and road drivable. Now, I have actually driven it around a little bit, so this is not technically the first drive, but um, it's time to take you guys along and sort of show you the initial thoughts and um, things that I still need to work on and improve and exactly how it's running at the moment. Now, I've been laid up the last week or so with shingles. It's horrible, I'm still getting over it, but um, in any case, let's get it out on the road and see what it's like. Yeah! Okay, first things first, I definitely like having the retractable seat belt over the fixed unit, much better. Um, one thing I have been noticing, this thing, particularly with these uh, triple carbies, really does not like to start when it's cold. Um, it's middle of winter here, so it's pretty cold in the mornings. Um, this is a little bit later in the morning, so it shouldn't be as bad, but uh, yeah, it takes a bit. Generally, uh, yeah, these carbies don't have any chokes on them. Um, those who don't know much about carbies, the choke is basically was, was designed to help cold starts with the, with the, the system it cuts off some, some of the air going into the uh, to the carby so that it runs a bit richer on startup. These don't have it, so it makes it a bit more difficult. Uh, the next thing I note on uh, startup, because I've got that uh, safety switch, the LPG safety switch set up on the fuel pump, it only lets the fuel pump run for a couple of seconds before it uh, turns off if the engine's not running. The issue with that being that uh, it doesn't give it quite enough time to prime the, the uh, pumps properly. So at the moment I have to turn the ignition on three or four times at least before I can hear the fuel pump quietening down and I know I've got enough fuel pressure. And what I think I'm gonna do to combat that is actually uh, put in a, an override button so I can just sort of hold the button down, let the fuel pump uh, prime and then um, it will uh, just go like normal once the car's started. All right, couple of pumps of the accelerator and... Ugh. All right, a little bit more fuel at the start and it seems to, seems to like it. So, all right, let's move off. Actually, that started pretty well this morning. but it still coughs and splutters and yeah it's uh, it's not a happy camper particularly when it's cold so some of the first things that uh, I noticed while driving the car um, it steers it sits nice and straight on the road the steering is um, particularly once I'm moving it's a little bit light I did get it uh, uh, loosely wheel aligned One of the compromises they made on this, because it is so low uh, and it's got quite a bit of camber on it because of that, um, basically what they did on the front was uh, make it tow in slightly so that it would try and wear the tyres a little more evenly. It does sit nice and straight on the road but it's a little bit light at speed and I'm not super happy with that so uh, I might adjust it myself out a little bit more just so that it's uh, it just feels a bit more stable and I actually have uh, you know, a big better feel on the, uh, as I go down the road. But the main thing I need to remember is the first few days of driving this car on the road is really a shakedown period. It's a time to get it out and see how it actually drives and find all the niggly little bits and pieces with it and just see what it's like. Um, and, and then I can go through and start refining things. The next thing that is blatantly obvious to me, driving the car around, uh, the taco works, the speedo is in miles an hour, and as we use kilometers an hour in Australia, that's a bit of a pain, but um, 
I haven't actually checked it against the GPS yet, but from what I understand, they don't really work that great anyway uh, in these old things. So um, I'll probably work out some way to, to have a mount for my phone that I can just use a GPS mount and read the speed off of that. Um, other things that are more of an issue, big is biggest issues, oil pressure and temperature gauges do not work, which is not a good thing when you're driving a, a, a car like this because you really want to keep an eye on how everything's running. gauge is also not working properly so uh, I've got a few bits and pieces to fix up there. The handbrake, the handbrake is way out of adjustment. I have to crank it all the way up to pretty much it's vertical and to get a little bit of, uh, of the handbrake to work so that needs to be adjusted. The, uh, the window, the seals are gone. Um, and it's it's really hard to crank up and down. It's it's not in line. I've got to get a new Bailey channel at, at the minimum on this. And um, yeah, if anyone knows how to get these to uh, wind up and down nicely, that's uh, something I'd like to see. I mean, I have to sort of wrestle it to sort of get it to do anything up and down and, and line it up and stuff. I know Bailey channel helps a crazy amount. Uh, and who, those who don't know what that is, that's actually the what the inside. Uh, channel inside the frame is called, it's known as Bailey channel. Another thing I've noticed is since I've put the, uh, the surround around the, the steering column in, um, it actually, because I've got a lot of wiring under there that I've had to alter and stuff, so there's a lot sort of packed in underneath it, um, the opening for the uh, right hand indicator is it's touching the plastic and it's really difficult to get the uh, right hand indicator to work It does work, but I need to actually sort of wrestle with it down So I need to uh, do something about that so that it lines up better with the opening But the best bit, the best bit is the sound feel the cam in this car. Basically, it doesn't have a lot of go down underneath about four and a half uh, thousand RPM. And as soon as you hit that, you can feel it come on cam and it really starts rocking it and it sounds amazing. Another thing I do notice is the brake pedal in this car. It's a little bit, um, I can feel the booster come in, so when I press it, sort of, there's not a lot, and then it's, and it sort of grabs quite quickly. It's quite easy, and it breaks well, but it's not, it's not a nice linear pedal, which is a bit annoying. Another, another thing is the, uh, this super long gear stick. I've got another gear stick for this, the shorter, but the bushing is gone in the bottom of it. Uh, this one has a bushing that actually holds, but it's, uh, it's rattling a bit, so I'm gonna have to open that up and inspect that. But overall, it's just great to actually have this car on the road. I am absolutely loving driving this thing around. Um, oh, it's so fun to drive. It's such a good car. I can hear, when it gets up on the cam like that, I can hear sort of the, um, uh, a bit of the sort of the, the rattle of the, the rockets and everything going. I'm not sure if that's normal or not. I mean, it, it doesn't sound nasty, but it just sounds, Racketing. Um, it doesn't sound loose, it just sounds rattly a little bit. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Let's see if you can hear it. Anyway, uh, just leave you to some sound.
Ah, oh, overall this thing is great to finally have on the road. I've been waiting for this for 18 months, but I've actually owned the car for probably two and a half years. So it's so good to actually have it completely together and running. It's great. There are quite a few bits and pieces I need to fix up on it. I also want to, uh, I'm, I'm gonna tweak the uh, adjustments on the dampers as well, because it's, it's a little bit rough for the rough roads around here. I just want it a little bit softer. Um, cause, uh, I think we all get a bit softer in our old age, don't we? <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, as always, help us out, uh, links to Patreon and all that sort of stuff in the, in the description. And, um, I think next time we might even see if, uh, Mrs. Jeff would like to take it for a drive. All right, guys. See ya.